Hi, this is Ranger Mara at Shenandoah National Park. Welcome to our virtual ranger program on wildflowers. We're still celebrating wildflowers here in spring in Shenandoah. We're at one of the higher elevations today uh, near Skyland. We're going to be going out a little ways on the Miller's Head Trail. We'll see what wildflowers we can see. Sometimes the ones on this trail can be a little bit different because of a variety of uh, factors, but one is that the geologic makeup of the, the area is a little bit different from Stony Man, which is a metabasalt greenstone underlying the plants. And here we have more of a granitic uh, rock layer, an older rock layer actually, in this part of the, um, the, the mountains here. So let's see what's out there and maybe we'll find something that we haven't seen before. So we've got a nice little patch of hay scented ferns coming up. You can tell that they're not quite uh, full sized yet. They're still growing, still coming up. And that wonderful color is unlike other fern colors, this pale lime green shade. It's one way that you can recognize the hay scented ferns. And they have that name for a reason. They do have a wonderful fragrance. When you're walking by, as they're coming up this time of year, you might get a nice uh, whiff of a very sweet uh, scented uh, fragrance, more of a spicy uh, sweet uh, scent. And that's coming from the hay scented fern. The other thing about hay scented ferns is look where they're growing, right out in the, in the sunlight or dappled sunlight, where most ferns prefer a shady place to grow. Hay scented fern is perfectly happy out in the open. So look for hay scented fern and uh, it, it, look, with, look with your nose because you may smell it before you see it. So hay scented fern, one of our delightful spring plants that are native here in the park. A shrub over here. This is one that uh, we don't see everywhere. This is the red-berried elder. Uh, you might have heard of elderberry, common elderberry, or you might have even uh, had elderberry jelly or elderberry jam or preserves when uh, in the past. And that's made from a relative of this elder. Uh, this one, instead of having those dark blue uh, berries, so to speak, on the elderberry, uh, these will be a, a small red uh, fruits on there. So these aren't as common as the common elderberry. Your red berried elders here in Shenandoah are found more on the higher elevations like we are here uh, on near, near Stony Man, but we're here on Miller's Head. There's a lovely little bouquet here of uh, wild pink flowers. Now we've, we've talked about these on other walks, but in case you've, you've missed that one, this is one of our larger flowers. So they're very uh, conspicuous. You might see them along Skyline Drive. Um, a member of the pink family, of course, those are the flowers that have kind of pinked or, or notched edges. And um, these will have five petals. They will be either pink or white. This one is kind of in between, sort of a pinkish white. And one thing you can notice about them is that on the back, where all of the petals go down into a tube, that's where the nectar is going to be for the pollinators. If you reach around and, and uh, feel that, it's very sticky. So it's one way to tell that you're, uh, you're looking at a wild pink. We've got a bunch of different violets along the trail here as well. I'm not going to point out each and every one of those, but they're one of our um, more um, ubiquitous wildflowers. They're just about everywhere. So look for them on any trail that you hike, including Miller's Head.
got our little bluettes along the trail. We've met those before, little blue flowers with yellow centers. plant that's not blooming yet but we get a lot of questions about it. Everybody asks what these are when they see these leaves coming up. This is a plant called fly poison. It's a member of the lily family. You can see all of those lily-like leaves coming up from the base but it won't have a, a lily flower like you would say a day lily like one of those big large drooping uh, flowers. The fly poison will <clears throat> excuse me the fly poison will have a stem coming up and then a kind of a fist-sized cluster of tiny white flowers all at the top. And they'll be blooming in another month or so, um, in early June, uh, depending on where you are in the park. Um, but uh, why is it called fly poison? This is a plant that is an old world plant as well as a new world plant found in Europe as well as North America. And uh, it was named long ago. People used to cut up um, some part of this plant, I'm not sure what part, chop it up and put it in a saucer of milk and set that saucer on the windowsill. And so the flies that were coming in the window would be attracted to the milk, but the juice from the plant would kill them. And so it was called fly poison. I'm not sure if that really works, but um, that's the story. So uh, fly poison, and it will be a very pretty plant. It will be coming up, uh, as I said, in another month. You'll see it along the woodland trails, right along the edges like this, and in open places like uh, the big meadow. It's a foggy day up here on Miller's Head, so we're not going to get much of a view of the valley unless this fog gets swept out of here. But that's okay because we're looking for wildflowers, and they're going to be close up, and we don't need a far view to see them. So stick with me. We'll duck under this tree and see what we can see. cluster of uh, Canada violets. Let's take a closer look at them. The violets are, as I said, pretty ubiquitous just about everywhere, and they come in a variety of colors. This one happens to be the Canada violet. It's a white violet, um, but you can tell it from other white violets because it, the petals on the back will have a purplish tinge to them. And you can probably see from here that some of them do have that purplish tinge. Something else that you might notice is that it appears that there's some hybridizing going on. And over here we've got some violets that are uh, purple and white mixed. So that will happen. So it's just kind of neat to see. You'll see some regular common blue violets mixed in with these Canada violets, and they could be hybridizing and making that kind of part purple, part white violet. I thought I saw you under here. Sometimes the prettiest flowers you really have to look for. They might not be right on the edge of the trail, and I just noticed this one sort of peeking out from behind a, a log. So uh, this is our trillium, our large flower trillium, um, one of the prettiest flowers we think in the park, and a very large flower, of course. This one looks like it's freshly uh, bloomed, and um, that's because we're at the one of the higher elevations here, above 3,500 feet. Um, uh, here on the Miller's Head Trail. And so the last of the, the early blooming flowers in our spring lineup of woodland uh, natives, they've worked their way up from the very bottom of the mountains and now they're starting to bloom at the highest elevations like where we are because the trees are just beginning to leaf out up here and they can still get a good amount of sunshine. So uh, look for Trillium uh, right now at the highest elevations in Shenandoah. Miller's Head Trail is a lovely trail. It is pretty rocky underfoot, so if you decide to, to
to hike it, take your time. I always uh, recommend a hiking stick on a rocky trail like this that acts as a third leg to help you get around. But no need to be in a hurry when you're looking for wildflowers. They're not going anywhere. There's a deer worth coming out for. This is the Shenandoah Valley spreading out to our west. Isn't that lovely? Even if you don't see any wildflowers on your walk, this is a view <laughs> worth taking a, a little jaunt. We're looking down at the town of Luray and Lake Arrowhead off here to the to the right. The Massanutten Mountains are hidden behind the fog just across the valley, about 10 miles away. Got a nice uh, small flowered native plant here. This is called smooth rockcress. And it's, uh, again, one of those flowers that you find generally on drier uh, places in rocky spots and sometimes at the higher elevations, but not always. Uh, smooth rock crest, not a lot to say about it, except that it's got a lot of little tiny flowers on it right there and a fairly common plant um, in Shenandoah. We're going to look for another type of rock crest that uh, I've only found right here on Miller's Head in a little bit. If we find it, we'll let you know. Uh, also, we've got another plant just coming up, just starting to get some flower buds on it. This is the wild sarsaparilla. And you might have uh, watched an old Western movie and then they said, you know, I'll have a sarsaparilla. Well, uh, wild sarsaparilla is one of the plants that um, people used to use to make uh, soft drinks, uh, like root beers and things like that, and sarsaparilla. So um, it's a beautiful plant. Uh, it will have some, uh, about, a, about a foot tall. It'll have the leaves coming out here, and then the flowers come out below the leaves. And usually there's uh, three stems uh, with flowers on them, small white flowers, but a beautiful little plant. And it will have a fairly dark, often a brownish or reddish brown stem and leaves on it. So look for wild sarsaparilla. Sometimes those leaves will be kind of shiny and sometimes people think that is poison ivy because <laughs> they look a little bit like that. But the leaves are, are fairly small and um, if you notice the flowers like this then that's very different from, from poison ivy. That's your wild sarsaparilla. This is one of our special plants, one of our more rare plants in the park. This is called purple clematis, and uh, it's a climber. You see this one is kind of climbed up this uh, gooseberry shrub, and the flowers are just gorgeous. Purple, with white centers, and they'll get uh, maybe sometimes twice that large. These ones have just opened up, just bloomed, um, but we don't find them everywhere in the park. Uh, the purple clematis uh, we'll find in the higher elevations um, in just a few spots. I just happen to know that this one uh, is a regular um, uh, here on the Miller's Head Trail, but uh, just off the trail. If you ever step off a trail, make sure that you're not tramping on any other wildflowers uh, or disturbing the, the habitat there. Uh, purple clematis uh, is related to the ones that you may have in your garden. Your garden clematis is those flowers are open and they'll have five petals. These are, are closed and drooping, um, but that's the, that's the native one. There's another clematis in the park. It's called wild clematis and it will bloom much later and it will have small white flowers just covering the, the plant. And it's also a climber like this one. So uh, look for that later in the summer, but right now, it's kind of cool to, to come across the, the purple clematis here in Shenandoah. So we're descending the Miller's Head Trail and it's very rocky, so remember that if you're planning to hike Miller's Head, watch your step, even if you're looking for wildflowers, 
Look away from the flowers and watch where you're putting your feet. We've got some uh, golden ragwort here, which is a nice flower. Um, nice native and very cheerful. You'll see these blooming pretty... You'll see these blooming all over the park. Um, but once they start, the very cheery bright uh, yellow petals with uh, kind of an orangey yellow center. Uh, member of the composite family, just like daisies. And uh, not much to say about them except that they're very pretty. Um, lovely flowers. And um, golden ragwort has a cousin called the heart-leaved, uh, round-leaved ragwort. That's right round-leaved ragwort, and they have a more yellow, like a sunny yellow uh, color to them, and, and a little bit different leaf at the base. But uh, golden ragwort, look for them, um, brightening up any trail right now in the higher elevations in Shenandoah. I have a service berry tree here. It's a small one. Uh, in fact, this one I noticed the, the tree had been cut. It probably uh, uh, broke and needed to be cut so it wouldn't be uh, across the trail. And uh, these sprouts have come up. And even though they're young, they're blooming. So serviceberry, one of the first trees to bloom in the park. And again, because we're at a higher elevation, they're just starting to bloom up here uh, above 3,500 feet um, along Skyline Drive and, and in the, the woods in our trails. So. Uh, service berry. Look for that brightening your woods uh, here in Shenandoah at the higher elevations. This is one of several species of maple trees that uh, grow here in Shenandoah National Park. This is called the striped maple and it's blooming right now. Um, all trees have flowers. Uh, some are more showy than others and uh, these uh, striped maple flowers are kind of dangling down uh, from the leaves. And they're beautiful little yellowish flowers and uh, the leaves of the uh, striped maple give it its one of its other names. It's called the goosefoot maple. So they look like a, the foot of a, of a goose there. Uh, striped maple because the young uh, trees have a, a fairly thin bark and it's it looks like it's striped green and kind of dark brown or maroon color. So those are vertical stripes on the striped maple. It's a it's an understory tree. It doesn't usually grow really big, but it'll take advantage of the the open uh, canopy here where uh, some trees have died and, and fallen away and left an opening in the forest. So striped maple blooming right now. There's another tree that looks a little bit like striped maple that grows in the highest elevations here in Shenandoah that looks a bit like this. It's called the mountain maple. And uh, you can tell its flowers are a little different because they will stand up and actually rise up above the leaves. So if you see something you're not sure if it's striped maple or mountain maple in our high elevations, uh, take a look at the flowers. And then of course the mountain maple will not have that green and, and, and brownish striped bark. So striped maple blooming right now in the park. You can see the flowers of another maple up ahead. That looks like red maple. Are you 
these piles of rocks like this, um, no one put them here. These are natural talus rocks. That means that it's just a pile of rocks that has um, continued to break up through freezing and thawing um, over time. I see a lot of these um, uh, here in the higher elevations at Shenandoah, talus uh, rocks. We've got some Solomon seal here. This is another member of the lily family. Um, without that, that big bell-shaped lily flower, it's got small flowers that hang down like, like little elongated bells, and they're just starting to open up. They'll open up from one end closest to the stem, and then they'll start to open all the way uh, out toward the, the end of the, of the, um, the leaf stem. And uh, just one of the prettiest little flowers. And sometimes you don't get a chance to see the flowers because you're looking down at the plant and you don't even notice them. So it's kind of one of the hidden gems uh, in Shenandoah, uh, Solomon's seal. This is another rock crest. We saw earlier the smooth rock crest, which was tall, had a lot of little white flowers on it, and is, is fairly common throughout the park. This is the lyre leaved rock crest. It's L-Y-R-E, lyre leaved. And the leaves are going to be at the base uh, there, and they're kind of toothed. And this little flower uh, is uh, one of our more rare flowers in the park. And this is actually the only trail that I've found it in the park. Now, it may grow in some other places, but it's very uncommon. Uh, and it's just a beautiful small flower. It has four petals, uh, little white petals on it. And they grow in little clusters like this, and generally um, on a rocky uh, area like that. And, and again, um, we said earlier uh, that the rock uh, underlying this section of the, the trail is not the greenstone basalt, uh, meadow basalt, that we have through a lot of the central section of the park, but it's more of a granitic uh, uh, rock, so it will have uh, different properties that those rocks will leach out into the soil, and other uh, different plants tend to tend to like that. So uh, lyre leaf rock crest apparently is one of those. And uh, just a beautiful little unusual flower to come across right here on the Miller's Head Trail. one that we haven't met yet. We've got some more of the lyre leaved rock cress, some wild pinks, and some small flowered phacelias. Those are the ones that are lining the trail here. They're kind of a uh, pale purplish uh, white, the uh, small flowered phacelia. Just a very uh, pretty little flower. Um, just kind of a shy little thing. You don't you know, it doesn't stand out, doesn't have big blossoms, but um, just lovely to see lining a trail like this. So um, that's the small flowered phacelia, that's P-H-A-C-E-L-I-A. -A. Um, lovely little native bouquets for us here. We found one more tree that's blooming uh, here in the, on the Miller's Head Trail, and that is the hawthorn. There are many different species of hawthorn uh, in the park, but uh, they all have the, the, the small white uh, rose flowers of the uh, rose family. And uh, the, the distinguishing uh, thing from hawthorns that uh, helps you to tell them from other trees, number one is their leaf shape. They're, they're uh, toothed, kind of oval. Uh, leaves, but they're they're very uh, toothy on the edges. But they also have um, thorns that can be over an inch long. So it's a good name for them, hawthorn, and uh, just a lovely uh, little uh, tree. Again, a, an understory tree. They don't tend to uh, to get very tall, and they tend to grow in openings uh, on the edges of the forest uh, rather than deep in the forest. They like a lot of sunlight. And uh, they will form, when those uh, uh, flowers are pollinated, they will form a, um, uh, a 
thorn apple it's called it's like a like a little rose hip uh, on the end there and uh, that's your hawthorn so another beautiful native flowering tree here well thank you for joining me on our hike to Miller's Head on our Miller's Head trail hike I should say and uh, we've seen a lot of interesting flowers here and heard some interesting birds as well. Um, but uh, I hope you'll join us uh, next time for our continued celebration of native woodland wildflowers here in Shenandoah National Park. Until then, this is Ranger Mara saying see you next time.